I turned it on. Okay. In that case, I guess we'll just get started. So I'll start off with the ad. Thank you for attending the Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow presented by the Connectra Society. Just to confirm, you guys can hear that? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yep. This event is sponsored by Capital Daily and Patterson Media's various Nanaimo radio stations. As a reminder, this event is being streamed and recorded to the Disability Foundation YouTube channel. Feel free to turn off your camera if you are not comfortable being recorded. For some quick housekeeping rules, please mute yourself during the presentation unless called on or instructed by the presenter. To ask a question, you can either type it into the chat box or unmute yourself at the end of the presentation. During this event, we have automatic closed captioning available. Please go to the bottom of the Zoom meeting, click Live Transcript, and then Show Subtitles to turn them on. Before we begin, We'd like to take a quick moment to let you know how you can join an opinion research panel made specifically for British Columbians living with disabilities. For 25 years, the Disability Foundation has been fostering meaningful experiences for Canadians with disabilities through outdoor recreation, social connectedness, innovative adaptive devices, and more. Today we are asking, how has the pandemic affected you? Help strengthen decision makers' understanding of your needs and experiences by joining an online opinion research panel consisting solely of people with disabilities and their caregivers. Make a difference in your community today. The Disability Foundation. Reimagine what is possible. Awesome. And then with that, we'll hand it off to Graham Wyman, who is part of the Vancouver Adaptive Music Society. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, my name is Graham Wyman, and I'm the program coordinator with the Vancouver Adaptive Music Society. I've been with the organization for seven years so far. And yeah, today I am here to answer your questions about BAMS, about how to participate, about upcoming events that we may have. But uh, before we do that, we are going to play a documentary that showcased kind of the aesthetic of VAMS uh, back in 2013. And uh, one of our projects called The Strong Sessions, which is a CD you can also find on Bandcamp. And yeah, so with that, I will uh, share my screen and we will get going with that documentary. Actually, sorry, one sec, I forgot one thing. Uh, share sound, there we go. All right. If you're not exercising your creativity, then you may not be having Graham, fun, and you may not be enjoying life. And you may... Zoom um, pop up on our screen. Oh, this one, sorry, yeah, I got you. There we go, is that better? Oh, it's my screen, I'm sorry. <laughs> May not really be you may be suffering but uh, exercise those creative abilities self-expression etc and life opens up right <laughs> Uh, my song is called Little House, Big World, Baha'i Kubo, Malaking Mundo. It's in many languages. It's about a little house in a big world, and you all, we're all part of that. And it's fun to work with the boom booms. They did some wonderful harmonies. It's really exciting. You are more beautiful than the morning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Good, good job, boys and girls. There was a lot leading up to it, uh, getting the artists together with each other and them going over the songs. We set up all the musicians so that, so that anything could happen. We had our arsenal of instruments put in position so we could scramble the battle stations quickly. There, that's a fun song. It's the best guitar in the world. In a classic sense, like the old Stax Records days or Motown, where someone would say, and I want the horns to go bop, 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 and I want this to happen, and you just respond and try to give them what they wanted. And then next, let's do it again. What is it? So you just went candy shop. Candy shop. Get some more licks in the candy shop. Yeah, a little two bar instrumental. Yeah, bring in art. Some of the people that expressed an interest had actually never been involved in music before. Hey, Art. How are you doing, man? Hey, Art. And working with our collaborators. Um, it just made the process that much, much easier. What we're going to do is be relentless and put this down in a structure. But you can be out there telling us, I don't think that's funky, dudes. It's not funky enough. <laughs> right. You could be uh, saying, I, I only want. I need a little more funky. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> My teacher used to take us for a march around the block. But it always make you teacher to the candy shop. If you go back to my injury, I sat around for the next two or three years after this wheelchair thing, wondering what I was doing, where I was going, and what was, you know, what was the point of it. But after I kind of took up this artistic dare and started painting, I went all over the place with my ideas. And when I started to put my heart into my life, I realized that with the writing is where the freedom is. <laughs> Yeah, with Craig Northey and the voice is really cool, man. And to have uh, Brian Adams' drummer uh, playing with me, man, it was so huge, you know? Like, he's just so big, man. I was like, wow. <laughs> Glenn David, like, just a full on rocker, and he is excited about his rock. We, we rocked it, it was awesome. Being in that little cubby hole and having the microphone in front of me and seeing the band outside is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, yeah. In the beginning, I, I took band class, you know, at high school. I had to practice at least an hour a day. This was with an accordion. Started out with the trumpet and went to the string bass. Playing classical music, I mean, playing William Tell Overture and, and Mozart and, and Strauss. When I heard Jimi Hendrix, he kind of turned my ears around. So I think I was in grade eight when I started my first band. I remember in my grade eight graduation, I got the courage to play my acoustic guitar at the dance. After I, I had some operations on my, on my legs that made it impossible to play the accordion over the summer. And I found a guitar. But I lost the ability to play guitar, so I went to study computer music, and now I've been losing the ability to edit. So then I took up harmonica. Something clicked because it was more social, a more social instrument. You know, the accordion. I played an accordion band, but that's that's like frogs getting together to mate or something. It's wonderful composing, but it's you know sitting and editing in the computer. Whereas harmonica, you know, it's just playing, so it's fun. Due to my condition, that. I, I could not play. I really had to give up performing. Vans opens up that door for, for music and, and it can really change people's lives actually. You know, when, you, when you're involved in something and you're really stoked on a project or sports, whatever it might be, and you know, for people to get into Vans and you know, write a song or you know, get back on some drums or keyboard and learn some instruments, make some music, it's, uh, it's the best thing. Actually, the greatest thing was kind of Jerry's energy the whole time, just like so happy and and uh, into this whole thing. Yeah, really. Inspiring. Well, when you've listened to your song for over a year with just your own vocals going da na 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 na, and you get right, to finally yeah. hear it in the studio with a full rock band. Woo! Warehouse. It was the place where this could happen. This kind of thing could happen. And the unique thing about the warehouse first is that it exists. It's made by a musician, Brian Adams, who, who thought of all the things that studios weren't. And he put all these things in like sunlight, oxygen, space, 
and you go in there and you record and you don't think about anything but the music because everything in your environment is just right. This building is a heritage building. It's one of the oldest buildings in Vancouver. Uh, once upon a time, it was a sort of like a hardware and supply store. This would be in the 1850s. So they would come into Vancouver Harbor from Victoria, come here, get supplies or a boat or whatever, and then go back over to the mouth of the Fraser and then go up as far as you could go beyond hope. And then, you know, this is gold mining uh, history, you know. So this building is amazing. People that I've seen here before that, but usually can only last short periods of time, stayed there the whole day. They didn't want to leave. Because everybody's saying yes to everyone. Nobody's saying no. Nobody, everybody's got a good vibe. So it just worked and worked and worked. And I just keep looking at it because we're going away from these two days with most of what we have. And there's a lot of work to be done before the whole thing's finished. Go ahead. What are we doing? Start the time. One, two, three. You got me singing and a dancing and a laughing and a clapping and a skipping and a jumping and I think I'm never gonna get enough of you. You're always standing by my side and never let a day go by that you don't make me feel a high. Keep on loving me no matter what I seem to do. Uh, BAMS is Vancouver Adaptive Music Society and we have a studio at JF Strong, the rehab centre. And we came down, we're interviewed and and qualified for for the uh, for the program. And uh, the next day I got a call and he says, you're in, man. You're fantastic. You're a resident rocker. I look forward to hitting the studios every week and, and uh, getting a tune going on. It's just... Um, well, Dave and Sam started VAMS uh, 25 years ago. Sam and I met in 1985 or so. And I remember going for a ride on a Greyhound bus with him or something like that, that had an, a, a compartment for people with, in wheelchairs behind the rear wheel. But we struck up a pretty quick friendship and we had a lot of things in common and we'd both been musicians in the, before our injuries and began to talk about the idea of developing a society that could support and facilitate access to musical expression for people with disabilities, including ourselves. Oh, you're gonna love this one. Oh, that sounds good. Before my injury, music was everything. And then become a quadriplegic, and you got all these pressures and stresses and, you know, confusion and frustration. Then you need music more than ever. And that is the time when you look at the keyboard and you, you know, what do I do with these? She said she needed love that she been through several dozen I got And then what happened? I think what happened was we came around at the time MIDI came and we grabbed it and maxed it out technology wise. There was no model we had, there was no example, you know, mm -hmm. quadriplegics playing music, you know, mm -hmm. that's wasn't really anything in anybody's vocabulary or anybody's, uh, you know, reality. Mary. That's not so good. Mary. You could tell you had four guys who just love music, so we just uh, kept going down the road with it, and then it led to, to do, you know, doing live performances. And we were like the performance band of uh, the Vancouver Adapted Music Society. Yeah, I think, in, you know, we were looking at a period when um, we were still at a threshold of people accepting others that had disabilities. I shouldn't say accepting, it's just that awkward about being around people with disabilities. Maybe that was Brentwood Mall, as I yeah. recall. Yeah, exactly. Uh, people would be, we were playing, I think I remember, in front of a shoe store. <laughs> and uh, people were just window shopping. We were just another window, in a way. People were just kind of like, oh, yeah, <laughs> moving out, you know. We were beside the mannequins. <laughs> 
and we were these quadriplegics yeah. playing music, you know, oh well, <laughs> just another yeah, sort of, uh, gimmick. Yeah, they didn't, uh, didn't quite know what to show. do with us, you know, in a way. But, you know, I think that's part of the whole uh, purpose of what we were doing, was to, to get out there, you know, and actually show people that uh, we can play music and, and uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't be playing music. Not that we're, you know, necessarily great musicians, given the way we adapted and we were just learning this new approach to music, really. Sam was a great, uh, a great chatter during throughout songs. So he found funny ways of, you know, introducing us as the band. And I think he, he said, you know, we, we're an all-disabled band and we only let, we only let able-bodied guys in if they have something wrong with them. And these two guys are morally disabled. So I think, I think that was his angle, right? Um, yeah, it's too bad. Sam won. Uh, and politics and I left music. <laughs> he made a great musician and wrote some really great songs. I think I, for a number of years I tried to put a lot of effort into writing my own material, doing my own thing, kind of not wanting anybody's help, wanting to prove something. And the more time I spend working with other people, the more time I realize that that's really where the kick is, you know. To, to watch somebody else's face light up and see that they can do something, they can write something, they can... Well, if I didn't have this program, I would, I would just be at home playing video games all day with nothing else to do. So the guitar gives, gives me m more stuff to work on for the future as a career. Anything's possible if you try and work at it. Yeah, the song is really taking on like a really big, legendary, sweeping vibe to it, yeah. I think he's excited about it. For the first time in my life, found the purpose, my piece of mind. And I know I'm gonna be alright. For the first time in my life, found the purpose. Odds and, and all the other uh, bands that we have they said this album is going to be phenomenal, let alone uh, that evening. Hello, hooray, let the show begin. I've been
It's been wonderful to collaborate with the musicians in town and, and the videographers like yourself. And it, it's, it's a great place and I'd like to just see it continue. So that was the uh, Strong Sessions documentary. And now I'd just like to open it up to anyone who has any questions just about the VAMS program. Yes, hi, my name is uh, Patrick Levy and uh, I'm disabled. And uh, like any activity for disabled members, uh, it's pretty expensive uh, getting adaptive equipment. And I'm just wondering uh, for these um, uh, musical instruments, uh, is there a grant or support? Uh, is the equipment provided? Um, anything to help out disabled uh, people? Yeah, so Patrick, that's a great question. Um, if um, there's two sides to that. So if um, you are interested in learning an instrument, VAMS actually has a donation program where we actually loan out instruments to artists. And um, the second side of that would be um, our one of our sister societies from the Disability Foundation, Tetra, actually has a program that would modify that particular instrument to meet your needs. Um, to give an example, you may have seen in the video, there was an artist who was playing a guitar on what we dubbed the guitar table where essentially the guitar is laid flat and he's able to play it like a piano. So that was actually created by Tetra. Um, we've done other instruments, such as if someone isn't able to use one arm, but they would like to play the trumpet, um, we've modified a, a mic stand to actually hold the trumpet. And um, from there, essentially they're able to play with one hand. So um, again, you would be able to find those modifications specifically at, I believe it's tetrasociety.org. Um, and yeah, they're, they're, they're great. You, you do what's called an RFA and then um, one, of the, one of the members would get back to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, any other questions? All right. Um, well, one thing I will also put in the chat, if you'd like to reach out to me directly, um, my, I'll put my email in the chat. And again, you can find my contact information at vams.org. Um, but, um, and then you can also inquire about our other programs as well. We have a podcast that we run three times a week on our channel called Reimagine Radio. Um, there's also, you can find our virtual concerts because of COVID, we've moved on to doing everything online at the current time. And those videos can be found either at bams.org or on the YouTube Disability Foundation channel. But again, uh, if you have any inquiries, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at uh, my email. Actually, I, I do have another question, Graham. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, no, don't worry at all. What I've realized is it's difficult to find information. And I've been made aware of this, uh, um, this event just last week, and it was shared from a uh, BC Wheelchair Sports Association, mm -hmm. or wheelchair uh, basketball yeah. at the last minute. And I wasn't aware of your group. I'm just curious of the publicity that is out there or uh, for people to find information or do you go to certain organizations and show up with certain instruments just to show uh, members at those groups that you exist? Yeah, so um, most of our promotion is done on our social media sites. Um, 
but we also do have connections within the lower mainland where we have what's actually called a mobile studio where if um, clients can't necessarily come to GF Strong to utilize the studio, um, we can actually go to them, whether that's a group home, a community center, an individual lesson. And so essentially this mobile studio is a cart that we've rigged up and we can provide the exact same services that we would at the studio um, out in uh, out in the least lower mainland and we're looking to expand that as well. I, I appreciate it. Uh, what I meant is if you're not aware that it exists, you won't know where to look mm -hmm. on social media. And I did go to GF Strong two years ago yeah. and I was not aware. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> weirdly enough there, this is, uh, something that's happened like the the communication about this I do work with quite a few OTs and PTs up at GF Strong and I think part of the connection with that is unless the client asks uh, they're, that they're interested in music um, a lot of the times they're not actually put or um, we're not made aware of them and I'll give you a perfect example Trevor um, unfortunately my best friend who I'd known since high school um, had a skiing accident and he went through GF Strong. And again, the only reason why he knew about the program was actually because we were so close and he knew about, I've been working there for a while. But um, I mean, we're, we are doing our best to try to promote it. Um, we have done PSAs say on global TV, um, but it, it, it is a process that we are trying to get more outreach for this program because I've seen personally that if people know about it, people will come. All right. Uh, yeah, Sheena? Oh, I think you're muted. There, can you hear me? Okay, yeah. yes, uh, yes. Um, um, uh, That warehouse, um, you know, uh, Craig Northy, uh, strong session director, um, mm -hmm. it's, you know, is, is that um, um, warehouse uh, still exist in this COVID time now or is it closed now or? Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly, I'm sure the warehouse is still running in a limited capacity. Um, okay. I'm not sure if they're fully open at this time. But, right. Um, the last time that BAMS was working at the warehouse was in 2013. So that would be the last time that I would know about that. I see. Yes, because uh, because I, I, I was uh, a part of the the VAMS choir and we were singing uh, uh, Sylvie uh, McCormick's, um, you know, original song. And that was uh, uh, fabulous. Um, so what about um, Craig Northey uh, with the odds? Do you still connect with odds uh, right now or? Um, with the COVID uh, time? No, not since COVID started. The last time that we spoke with them was at the um, BAM's 30th anniversary concert in 2018. I see. Um, so um, let's see. I'm, I'm I'm trying to get to the difficult question. Um, uh, hmm. Um, so, um, because I, because you used to teach me, you know, in the wonderful uh, BAM studio at GF Strong, Graham, thank you very much, um, with the news now, um, uh, with the, um, you know, the vaccination, uh, they've wrapped it up, and, and uh, um, so, so, what, 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 what can, are we allowed back into GF Strong now, or is everything still, you know, no, um, what, 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 what's happening, like, we're not allowed to go to GF Strong anymore, the BAM studio? At this time, we have not been allowed in since March 16, 2020. And again, we're working with GF Strong to try to rectify that and we can get in. But understandably so, our program runs a lot with help patients. So there's a lot of yes. people coming in that aren't actually at the hospital. And just given the, um, the population that is at GF Strong, um, it's understandable that they wouldn't want. Um, uh, yes. Yes, I understand now. For the safety.
Okay, I think we'll give it one more minute and then I'll start giving my intro spiel. Okay, it's 12.02, so I'll kind of just get started. And if more people come in, we'll just kind of incorporate them into the discussion. So hello, or well, let me double check. Uh, Christina, is the live stream going first? Yes, the live stream's going. Awesome. So hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this second event of the Connectra Artist Series in partnership with Kickstart, Disabilities, Art, and Culture as well as it being one of the first events of the Connectra Presents Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow. So very special time to have both things happening concurrently. Uh, for those watching or currently in the Zoom meeting live or watching on Facebook or YouTube outside of this, we're really happy to have you here and hear more about some of the artists in the disability community and why they do what they do, how they do what they do, and all the different things about that. Before we begin, I'm going to be showing a quick uh, video for the Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow, just to give you guys um, a little bit more knowledge about our sponsors and some housekeeping rules. Uh, Christina, will you let me know if you can hear the audio momentarily? Thank you for attending the Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow presented by the Connector okay. Society. Okay. This event is sponsored by Capital Daily and Patterson Media's various Nanaimo radio stations. As a reminder, this event is being streamed and recorded to the Disability Foundation YouTube channel. Feel free to turn off your camera if you are not comfortable being recorded. For some quick housekeeping rules, Please mute yourself during the presentation unless called on or instructed by the presenter. To ask a question, you can either type it into the chat box or unmute yourself at the end of the presentation. During this event, we have automatic closed captioning available. Please go to the bottom of the Zoom meeting, click Live Transcript, and then Show Subtitles to turn them on. Before we begin, We'd like to take a quick moment to let you know how you can join an opinion research panel made specifically for British Columbians living with disabilities. For 25 years, the Disability Foundation has been fostering meaningful experiences for Canadians with disabilities through outdoor recreation, social connectedness, innovative adaptive devices, and more. Today we are asking, how has the pandemic affected you? Help strengthen decision makers' understanding of your needs and experiences by joining an online opinion research panel consisting solely of people with disabilities and their caregivers. Make a difference in your community today. The Disability Foundation. Reimagine what is possible. All right, so thank you for watching that. And now I'll pass it off to Troy Lindstrom, one of the artists and the one artist featured for today. Um, is my PowerPoint up? Yes, you're good. Okay. Little screens in a way I can't read my text. There we go. Um, slide description. On the left side is a portrait of me, a bearded man with glasses. My face has a bit of a scowl. On the right is gray background. It's the text Troy Lindstrom, illustrator, advocate, artist with a disability. Hello, my name is Troy Lindstrom, and I am an illustrator, advocate, and artist with a disability. I'm speaking to you today from the from the traditional territory of the Clayton Tanay, and I live in Prince George, BC. It has been a tough year for everyone, and my creative process has changed too. It has changed from one of positive creations and a goal of making my art more accessible and inclusive into one of struggle and frustration at how people with disability have been treated during the pandemic. 
I've tried not to become too pessimistic and being able to express myself through my art has helped. Slide description, text, portrait, title, Kazi, digital portrait, created 2019, part of the positive practice, acts of kindness and creating with a disability exhibit. Image, grayscale line art, illustration of bearded man with short hair and glasses with aqua color background and artist's logo in the bottom corner of the image, a red T with a silhouetted pen cut from it. I had my first exhibit last year at the Two Rivers Gallery in Prince George. It was called Positive Practices, Acts of Kindness and Creating with a Disability. The exhibit was a series of 12 portraits I created of people who had a positive impact on me. Originally scheduled for May of 2020, it was postponed until December of 2020. Slide description, text, portrait titled, all of digital portrait, created 2019, part of the positive practice, acts of kindness, and creating with the disability exhibit. The image, grayscale illustration of older woman with short hair and glasses. She is wearing a necklace with shells, dragonflies, and other baubles with a red background and the artist's logo in the bottom corner of the image. The exhibit was to highlight people who had had an impact on me, big and small. Family members like my mom shown here that had always been there for me, to others that just welcomed me into their circles and would ask how I was doing. When I created these portraits, my view of living with a disability, with a disability in Canada was more positive. Slide description, text, portrait titled Kim, digital portrait created 2019, part of the positive practices, acts of kindness and creating with this disability exhibit. Image, grayscale line art, illustration of a woman with short hair, wearing a Métis sash around her neck and a large teardrop earring with a turquoise color background and the artist's logo on the bottom right. I love detailed line art and I could spend hours lost in my work. This portrait of Kim Gilliam Stewart, one of my instructors at college and a Métis artist. She was the first artist I had ever worked with as her assistant. That was the first time I felt I had had purpose. I've tried more normal careers, normal in quotes. I went to school for accounting and office work, but was not able to find employment. I was told my presence would be too disruptive. I also went to school for graphic design, but after a year of searching, I had to reevaluate. In the end, I had the most success just creating illustrations. Slide description, text, portrait titled Kaylee, digital portrait created 2020, part of the positive practice and acts of kindness creating with disability exhibit. Image, grayscale art illustration of a woman with long hair tied in the back with glasses. Her bangs come down in front, just above her glasses. She is wearing a twisted scarf and a jacket with a blue background and artist's logo in the bottom right corner. I always enjoy illustrating hair. It flows like water and I tend to make it a focal point of my work. The exhibit went well, but it was muted. It was a muted experience. December 2020 was a bad month for COVID and living with a compromised immune system, I was only able to visit a few times. There was no first opening for me and what I had hoped to be a spring for my art was not. Slide description, left side of slide has a grayscale two-tone square This with this text. I am a person with a disability, hashtag not a monster. The right contains a black and white illustration of Frankenstein's monster from the neck up with the text, I am a person with a disability on top and hashtag not a monster at the bottom. The background is a word cloud. I was very positive about accessibility and disability inclusion efforts before the pandemic. I have friends that work in accessibility and we seem to be making real progress, but the pandemic changed that for me. I saw how we were left to fend for ourselves while so many other groups received supports people with disabilities did not. It was like we were invisible since we had no worth to Canada and our leaders 
since we had no worth to Canada and our leaders, nothing needed to be done to help us. I was fortunate to live in British Columbia, one of the few provinces that provided extra disability supports. The $300 extra disability supplement was not a lot, but it was something. There was much more than people received in other provinces. I wanted to confront the bias many Canadians have towards people with disabilities. So I started the Not A series of illustrations. Slide description. On the left slide side of the slide has a two-tone gray square with the text, I am a person with a disability, hashtag not invisible. The right contains a black and white line illustration of the invisible man from the neck up, his face wrapped in bandages wearing vintage sunglasses with the text, I am a person with a disability at top and hashtag not invisible at the bottom. I have completed six illustrations in this series with another six planned in the planning stages. I want people who view these images to examine their own bias towards people with disabilities. If I can get people to recognize that bias, maybe I can get them to see us. That bias is still strong as ever. I see it in the lack of action of our leaders and the indifference of the public. Slide description, left side of the slide is two-tone gray square with the text, I am a person with a disability, hashtag not better off dead. The right contains a black and white line illustration of the Grim Reaper from the neck up. Text, I'm a person with a disability at top and hashtag not better off dead at the bottom. When Bill C-7 was introduced, it confirmed to me what I saw, that they saw us less, less than, that we were better off dead. It was a hard pill to swallow. No pandemic supports for people with disabilities while others in the government deemed worthy were given money hand over fist. Then they introduced Bill C-7. Slide description. The left side of the slide has a two-tone gray square with the text, I am a person with a disability, hashtag not a freak of nature. The right contains a color line illustration of the creature from the Black Lagoon from the neck up with the silhouetted image of a swamp in the background with the text, I am a person with a disability at the top and hashtag not a freak of nature at the bottom. As the summer of 2020 came to an end and still nothing had been done to help people with disabilities, I started to become more angry. And my art started to become harsher as the artist, as an artist, I don't want to create the shock. I want to create beautiful illustrations that I can lose myself in. I couldn't create those things anymore. I wanted to bludgeon the viewer with my illustrations, make them see how we were suffering. But I knew if I took my message too far, it would be dismissed. I had to focus on my message and tamp down my rage. Slide description, left part of the slide is a black and white text grasping at straw man. The right has an illustration of Justin Trudeau looking into the distance with three hands grasping his jacket and scarf. The three hands are wearing rings and splints engraved with the word why us. The background is the background is a letter with the letterhead of United Nations. All through the debate on Bill C-7 and the continuing pandemic, it felt to me that the federal government did not see people with disabilities. Grasping at straw man represents the prime minister not seeing or suffering as we try to get his attention. The background is a copy of the letter sent to Canada by the special rapporteur on disability from the United Nations. I watch presentations on accessibility by the Minister of Disability and others, and I think there's a divide between those with status in society and those who have none. For us, it is survival, just getting the resources to buy food and pay rent. For people that have a disability with status, it seems it is about breaking through barriers so people with disabilities can have more access. Canadians do not want to hear the struggle of people that live in poverty in this country. So those with status are given the mic. 
the minister talks about all these great advances in accessibility and inclusion, while many of us look on from the outside. Slide description, an illustration of the outline of a person on fire, sitting in a circle of stones surrounded by burnt canes and walking sticks. The figure is transparent and you can see their black lungs, broken ribs and bones. A burning surgical mask falls from their face. The background is yellow and the artist's logo at the bottom right corner. On the right side of the slide is a black hexagon with the text, first to the flame in orange. In a large scale crisis, people with disabilities will be the first sacrifice for the greater good. I've always felt this was true and 2020 and 2021 has confirmed that to me. Watching the response to the heat wave this summer and the utter indifference to the massive loss of life wasn't surprising. Those of us that have seen, those of us that are seen as not having worth will always be sacrificed first, no matter if it's a pandemic or a climate crisis. Large grayscale Slide description, grayscale image of a woman a woman in a Japanese kimono. Text in the bottom right, Paralympian Nakanishi Mea. This is an illustration I did of Paralympian Nakanishi Mea. The original is 170 centimeters by 90 centimeters. Whenever I needed a break from more serious pieces, I would work on this. I find it relaxing to get lost in the details of an illustration. It was my palate cleanser. Slide description, kimono illustration zoomed in and cropped just above the shoulders, just below the shoulders. The kimono has maple leaves and buds embroidered on it. The woman has short hair covering her left ear. The face is cell shaded with gray and the pupils of her eyes are black. She has a determined look on her face. Japan has always influenced my art. With this piece, I wanted to draw a kimono, but I didn't want to just add anyone as a subject. I chose Mick, Miss Nakanishi because of her strength, something I wanted to portray in the illustration. Slide description, kimono cropped at the waist. The sleeves with their embroidered bud the sleeves with the embroidered budding branches and an obi or belt with traditionals with many silhouetted maple leaves in front of a sun. When I create art with a negative as aspect, it is draining. The illustration was, this illustration was an important part of my mental health regimen. The pandemic has been stressful for, for everyone and people need an outlet to deal with that stress. With the piece, I, with this piece, I could sit down and just draw. There is no negative aspect to it for me, only positive. Japan is somewhere I want to visit, go to a vegetable, visit a temple and eat too much food. Slide description, grayscale image of a woman in a Japanese kimono, text at the bottom right, Paralympian Nakanishi Mea. This image is hard. This image is hard to show in this format. The illustration is so large. So um, the illustration itself is large. So you can't see much of the detail of the drawing. But I wanted to end my presentation on a positive to show that to show what makes me happy as an artist. Slide description. On the left side is a portrait of me, a bitter man with glasses. My face has a bit of a scowl. On the right is a grayscale background with the text, thank, thank you, with three web links and patronage welcome at kofi.tefran. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone for having me here today. Um, I, I, um, the three links, the uh, first one is my portfolio, if anybody's interested in seeing. Uh, my Twitter is where I talk a lot about disability and show off my art. And my Instagram is where I usually show my work in progress, um, how, as it's going along. 
And um, if anybody wants to be a, a patron and um, donate, uh, my uh, my donation page is kofi.com backslash Tefran. Thank you. Thank you, Troy, for sharing your very powerful work and what it means to you for each of them. Um, I don't know if anyone else in the room has any questions. I guess this would be the time to kind of ask those. <laughs> ah, yes. Hi. Um, hi, Troy. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, um, uh, wow. It, 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 uh, it, um, uh, how long does it take to um, to paint? Uh, is it um, uh, to, to paint your um, your picture? Uh, usually uh, I do all my work digitally, so it's on the computer. And so for a portrait, like the ones in the beginning, it probably takes depending on the detail I want into it, 10 to 15 hours. I see. Oh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's great. Um, digital art. Um, hmm. I'm new to that. So, uh, uh, hmm. Yes. Uh, I don't know what to say. I'm just so, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just inspired and, and you're very talented and thank you for showing your, your, your talent. And, um, so it's like, there's no disability there. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a beautifulness from your mind and you've expressed it through your art and it's very beautiful. So thank you very much. Uh, um, yeah, I, I've always done my work digitally because, um, it's just, it doesn't take the resources of a traditional paint. Like I don't have to buy paints. I don't have to buy canvas. Um, I bought a $30 art program that I've used for 10 years and I create everything on that. And then if I need something printed out, I take it down to Staples and, uh, they can print pretty big, uh, um, prints for me. Oh, and, uh, it's Thanks. just, it's just. It's it's a less expensive way to just produce as much art as I want with very little cost. Right. Hmm. Continue on. That's uh. Thank you for explaining that. I was thinking, wow, how do you do that? So so do you do do you create by uh, moving your mouse? Is that is that what it is? No, I have a it's a digital uh, pen tablet. So it's kind of oh. like an iPad, but it attaches to my computer. Um, it's a it's a large monitor, and then I have a stylus. Oh, I see. That I draw on the screen with, and it's just and I can turn this into any brush I want, you know, uh, watercolor brush, uh, oil painting brush, or just like um, inker or a, a pencil. Uh, oh. We'll do that. You just select the nib that you want, and then you draw on the screen like your monitor. It's a special screen, it's quite expensive. Um, but there are ones that are uh, much more um, less expensive for uh, people just starting out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and that's, I just sit here and I work all day. And uh, until I get tired, I try not to overdo it. Uh, I really wanna, I have been focusing my art on disability arts because I, I, I don't think we have the visibility we need right now and so that's what i've been doing and sharing yes yes thank you um yes it's uh you you've worded it so well because i have a disability and it's very very uh, uh challenging and hard uh now and um and and the way you've expressed uh you know uh from your painting which is uh which is uh makes me um just to be more aware of the of the of um the the um of the world that we're living the ability world and the disability world um um yeah and uh so um i don't remember um i i have a disability from a severe car accident so my, i have short-term memory problem um so uh your uh um uh I see. So, so can you paint with um, colors? 
Like, can you fill in with colors? Oh, yes. Or, yes. Like, some digital artists, it, it, they can make it look like they're, they're painting a, an oil canvas. You can't tell the difference. Uh, I myself, I love black and white line art. I just like line work. And that's why you'll see with a lot of my, my pieces that I showed, there's de lots of detail and it's all line. I, I don't like adding too much color because then it washes out the line work and you lose the detail. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, I'll use some grays and a little bit of color, but I want my lines to be emphasized more than anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love your pet friend right behind you. So yes, thank oh, you for what, 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 what you're saying. It's, it's, it's really um, um, concise, you know, it's, it's, it's very, uh, the, the kamo, uh, what, what do you call the Japanese? Uh, Komodo. Uh, yeah, Komodo, uh, yes. So it's, uh, it, um, so that's from your imagination, is that right? Uh, like the face of her and- No, and, she's a real person. Oh, is that right? Yeah, um, the kimono is my design. Um, I wanted to draw, I love Japanese culture and I yes. love drawing kimonos because they put so much work into them, the embroidery and the designs. And I like doing that. That's a, that's what I enjoy, but I wanted yes. the, the illustration to have, just didn't have a random person in it. Uh, somebody I made up, I wanted it to be a real person. So that's mm -hmm. why I chose, um, Miss Nakanishi. She's a Paralympian. Uh, she's going to be in the Olympics, in the Paralympic Games in a few weeks. I see her name. Uh, okay. And I follow her on Twitter. And um, I, I wanted someone that um, exuded strength. Yes. Um, and the, the reference pictures I found of her, that's what, that's what I felt when I saw them. Wow. And, and I wanted the, the picture to be the beauty of the kimono and the strength of the person. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm sure person she's, with she, disability. yes. And, do, and you tell her about that, right? So, uh, right. So she knows. Well, I, yeah, whenever I, like I tweeted it and then um, I always put in uh, the person, if I do a picture of somebody, I'll, uh, oh, yes. Right. Tweet right. Them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I, I don't know what tweeted or things like that. It's just I'm not I'm not uh, uh, you know tech savvy uh, oh. anymore. So so uh, but but uh, you know uh, uh, just just uh, yes. Thank you for explaining that. Um, yeah. We also have a question from the sure. chat. Um, please tell us when you became an artist. Kind of origins. Um, I've always drawn. Like when I was mm -hmm. a little kid, I would draw superheroes. And, um, it, you know, as years went on, when I, when my first, when my disability first hit, I have seriatic arthritis and it mm -hmm. hit me hard in my early twenties. So that's when it did most of the damage when it fused my spine and, and it fused my hands and because I was at home with chronic pain for years, it was something I could do to lose myself. <clears throat> and everybody loses themselves in a depression sometimes where you just don't do anything. And mm -hmm. for years I did that. And then one day I woke up and said, I have to get something done. And, but I never thought of being an artist. It was always, oh, well, I got to get a real job. So I went to school for accounting and then I went to school for graphic design and it just, people didn't like want to hire me and it was frustrating. Mm. And I just, I, um, one day um, I did a portrait of somebody on um, that I knew online and it turned out so well, I did another portrait and then everyone got better. Mm -hmm. And um and when I had enough, then I went to our local gallery and I showed them. And I was, and I said, you know, what do you think if I applied for a show there? And they were quite excited. And that surprised me. And it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of snowballed from there. It's, um, I was able to get a Canada Council of the Arts grant last year to help with my uh, exhibit, which was, mm -hmm. I got that just as the pandemic hit. 
So Ooh. I was so, uh, luckier than a lot of people that I had the resources to hunker down um, and get through the pandemic for the mm -hmm. most part. I was, um, I was so fortunate to get that grant. And um, so that, and that's what I've, I've been working through. I, I mm -hmm. work a lot with people, like I have friends in the accessibility industry. Um, most of them work at Microsoft. Microsoft's been doing a great job with Ooh. accessibility. And I, that's where I've been learning um, how to advocate for accessibility myself through those people. And, but as the pandemic hit, and I just, I, I saw how we were being ignored by the government and it's like they keep promising things, but they never do anything. And I just get it started getting more and more frustrated. So I knew we have to make a way for the public to see us and see mm -hmm. us as people, not as less than people. And that's what my, my uh, after doing the portraits, that's what my work has transformed into. Mm -hmm. um, I do some protest work, art that I, I show on my Twitter. I wouldn't show it here because um, it, it it's not offensive, but it's 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 harsh. Um, mm -hmm. I I don't make fun of people's appearance, anything like that. But if I disagree with them, that's what I will put into the art. Um, and that it's it's been quite negative for me as an artist. I would love to just do my you know my the, the stuff that I love to do. Mm -hmm. But we have to be more visible. We have to make people see us. If we're gonna, like, if we're gonna get this disability benefit from the federal government, that right now is just a framework. We have to make them see us and uh, recognize that we're here and we need support. Yeah, not only the government but just the public, so that there's allies in that form. That too, like, even looking for work. It went, like when I did my accounting course and mm -hmm. for so long I couldn't get any traction so I, I I went and I talked to a partner at one of the firms in the mm -hmm. town I lived and he explained to me well you're they don't want the disruption to their workplace that I would bring that um, my hands are fused so I can't use a typewriter very well so I would use voice recognition software and he said, they're not gonna let you do that. Any special equipment that you have so you could be comfortable, other employees could get jealous of. And that's what he told me. And it's just, we gotta make people see that we're not something or people to be frightened of, that we're just people too. And mm -hmm. we need um, just people to be fair and not, because. Disability is still acceptable to discriminate people on. It's still acceptable in the public's eyes. Like they had a, what was it, a, a survey about four years, five years ago that said 49% of people thought it was understandable if an employee didn't hire somebody with a disability because they thought it might be dangerous. That's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And we just gotta, just gotta convince people that, um, to, let us, to let us in. Because so mm -hmm. many of us are living in poverty and we're not part of society and mm -hmm. we deserve to be. Yeah. To kind of branch on that, I had a question on the hashtag not series that you were doing. Mm -hmm. How were you coming up with those hashtags? Were they things that you've personally been told or? The first were things that, things that um, way I had been treated by people mm -hmm. um, like uh, with when my seriatic arthritis is quite bad um, not only does it deform them my hands but it I had large scaly patches on my arms mm -hmm. and you know people they like I had a friend say to me well is it contagious are you going to give it to me and it's a genetic disease mm -hmm. but people don't understand that so like they they stare and so you isolate yourself 
And that's where I am not a monster came from. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I personally thought I have always, people with disability have been invisible in Canada, in the world. If you, if you look around, we're hidden. And that's where I am not invisible came from. And um, I have other ones like I did uh, image of uh, the vampire Nasperatu and the attached, I am not a drain on society. And then I am, and again, the freak of nature is kind of like the monster one, is when people won't even go near you, they're scared of you. Um, and the ones I have planned, a lot of them are um, not specifically how I felt sometimes, but it's just general bias a lot of people have towards people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Are there any other questions for Troy from anyone here? Um, Troy? Hi. Uh, hi. Yes, hi. Um, I, I told you that um, uh, um, 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 I'm, 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 I'm disabled, dis disabled from um, uh, not my fault, a severe car accident. So I have to start life all over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, a traumatic brain injury, it makes it even more uh, difficult because people cannot see. Like, for example, if I'm in, I'm in a wheelchair, then people see that I have a physical disability. And I've gotten out of, you know, I've, 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 I've worked hard and I got out of, 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 of a wheelchair, but I, I, I can walk. But, but, you know, I limp a bit when I'm tired and sometimes I don't know if I'm limping but besides from that um so so thanks for mentioning about uh, and then I forgot what you've just said about uh, your arms or something so are you disabled from car accident too or are you born with a disability and and, and may I ask what is your uh, uh, disability is it a brain injury or uh, I don't know so uh, no uh, in my early 20s I got a genetic disorder called seriatic arthritis. So okay. what it did was um, I would get large psoriasis patches on my skin, and that's my immune system attacking my skin. And then my, um, like, my, it's called dubbing. So my fingers started to fuse, as well mm -hmm. as my, um, my, the most of the vertebrae in my neck naturally fused. So, do, so what does that mean? Does that hurt? Uh, do you mind if I ask? Does that, it, does that hurt? Or? The first, when it happened over the first six years, I was in a, in a lot of pain. Oh, uh, they had me on fistfuls of, of everything. Um, but yeah. once they found a uh, medication that worked for me, I would take weekly gold shots. I can't remember what they're called. They just, it was an old medication that, that they found it was the only one that worked with me. I see. And it, and, it, it, and it got everything under control. So there was, it wasn't doing any more damage, but most of the damage was already done. I so, see. Um, yes. Yeah, I have damaged pretty much all my joints. I, oh, yes. Um, so when you um, express yourself, um, you know, by, um, by, by your digital art, um, does it hurt? Uh, I don't know, because I, I don't no, have your, no. your body or mine. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if I overdo it, it does. It's like with anything, if I walk too far or I stand yes, too yes. long, yeah. then, the, then the next day uh, I'm in bed. I'm just yes, laying right. there. Yeah, just the natural reactions or something. It's okay. just I got a rest thank after you. that. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yeah, thank you for, for explaining um, that. So, And then did you say that you started, um, uh, you, you, you became an artist at, at the age of eight? Did you say that? I can't remember oh, what you said. Yeah. Um, I've always drawn. Uh, like when I was a kid, I all through school, That's I nice. took every art class I could, every art class I could. Mm. Um, and um, it was just something I've always loved to do. And, but I just, mm. I never let myself do it. Like be an artist. It right. It was always a secondary thing. Now um, you have. So I'm proud of you. Wow. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm happier. Yes. This way. Um and I hope in the future that um, I want to do more shows. Uh, I have a residency 
preliminary, we're doing preliminary planning for residency in Prince, a residency in Prince George for a month um, locally. And then um, it's wonderful. Um, yes. I have some work shown at the outside air exhibit in Vancouver uh, in December. Uh, wow, starting. please do. You know, and show the world that uh, that uh, you know that uh, that you're motivated and and you you are you you being an artist and and, and you're blooming, uh, you know, from from being uh, from 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 being a, a, a just showing your talents. So you inspire me. Thank you very much. And because I have my own uh, you know disabilities, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to just sort of come out of my shell to uh, to to just you know. Uh, uh, journey through life, and I, I, I find that you know I have speakers from you, and perhaps I will inspire other people who, uh, you know, who who you know had um, share experiences as 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 as, as I, and, and I'm hoping to have a supporters too uh, along the way. But you know, um, um, so uh, right now I just have to take better care of myself in this uh, you know COVID time, and um, yeah. yes, that's uh, I think it's important. Otherwise, I. I go downhill more, you know, mentally and physically, and, and that's not good. Where yeah. you know I feel trapped and stuck, and and uh, yeah. so and that's not good to have um, depressions or anxiety controlling your life. So, but then you know this is uh, your your way of of uh, of of um, 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 expressing the beauty of art and real person from Olympic. So so thank yeah. you. And then continue on of, uh, yes, just being you. Thank you for sharing your art with me. I'm so happy to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to see and, and feel and, and just be, wow, he's my, you know, mm -hmm. uh, motivator. He, he's awesome. And so, so, uh, and I'm not the only one. So, you know, so thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like I have my hard times too. I have the anxiety. Yeah. I have the depression. Um, and I have my art to help me out of that. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I, I'll punish myself and not draw intentionally because yeah. I know it'll make me feel better. And that's just, I, I have to work through stuff like that. Because yeah. for many years, I hid in my home. I yeah. hardly went out. Uh, I just played video games and I drowned myself in that. But it came to a point where I had to do something. I, I wanted to make a life for myself and it's hard to do that with what you get on disability benefits, but I'm trying my best. Yes. Yes. Right. So I don't really know that term there and no disability benefit, but, but uh, you're trying your best and you're doing a great job and, 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 and you're, you're coming out of that, that, that black hole of, 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 uh, you know, the, 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 the darkness, the depression that seems to swallow you up and, and, and you, you know, and then, and, and now uh, your, your art exists and, and you express yourself and, and you inspire other artists or beginning art, beginner artists. And so, so um yeah so thank you for uh for um just thank you <laughs> you're welcome awesome. and Do yeah we have any other questions before i guess we'll wrap up for today going one and going twice <laughs> okay well thank you troy for again sharing your work sharing your message and showing all of us how powerful if you have a passion, you can make it. So thank you again yeah, thank for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, for everyone else here and everyone watching the live stream, we hope that you continue to join us for the Connector Artist Series. Uh, there's a Facebook event that is on the Connector Facebook page, as well as checking out the rest of the Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow. Links are in the chat. And overseeing the operations of all the events today. Oh my god! Um, her, her, and Angela are kind of, um, yeah, making sure making sure everything transitions well, and any tech issues that come up are resolved. Nice. Yeah. And then, perfect. I've got my screen share ready for whenever the YouTube okay. live stream is on. All right. Any idea how many attendees? Let's see. You know, we normally have um, attendees that view from the YouTube live stream and I'd be okay. 
believe we'll be able to keep tabs on how many people are on the live stream throughout the okay. presentation. Okay. Um, and this, this meeting will remain open for anyone that joins um, throughout through like the direct Zoom link as well. Right. Cool. Perfect. Are we all good to go, Christina? Um, yep. Okay, awesome. I will go ahead and present one moment. All right, share screen, share sound. Perfect. Is that visible for everyone? Yep, looks good to me. Awesome. Thank you for attending the Vancouver Island Virtual Roadshow presented by the Connectra Society. This event is sponsored by Capital Daily and Patterson Media's various Nanaimo radio stations. As a reminder, this event is being streamed and recorded to the Disability Foundation YouTube channel. Feel free to turn off your camera if you are not comfortable being recorded. For some quick housekeeping rules, please mute yourself during the presentation unless called on or instructed by the presenter. To ask a question, you can either type it into the chat box or unmute yourself at the end of the presentation. During this event, we have automatic closed captioning available. Please go to the bottom of the Zoom meeting, click Live Transcript, and then Show Subtitles to turn them on. Before we begin, we'd like to take a quick moment to let you know how you can join an opinion research panel made specifically for British Columbians living with disabilities. For 25 years, the Disability Foundation has been fostering meaningful experiences for Canadians with disabilities through outdoor recreation, social connectedness, innovative adaptive devices, and more. Today we are asking, how has the pandemic affected you? Help strengthen decision makers' understanding of your needs and experiences by joining an online opinion research panel consisting solely of people with disabilities and their caregivers. Make a difference in your community today. The Disability Foundation. Reimagine what is possible. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, that's it for our little pre-introduction. And then I think as long as everything looks okay, Christina, we can go ahead and pass it along to Nate. Yep, everything's good on my side. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate the uh, technical help today. I couldn't do it without you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nate from the Neil Squire Society, and I'll be going over a variety of our programs with you today. Uh, unfortunately, we had uh, somebody not well today, so it's it's all me today. So I apologize that you have to listen to my voice for the whole uh, 45 minutes or whatever it is here today. But we're going to share with you some of the great programs that we have available uh, through the Neil through Neil Squire. Um, whether it be this distance computer comfort training program, which is a very popular program for us and that uh, addresses some of the digital literacy challenges we have in Canada. Uh, we're going to share with you our employment program called Working Together, which is a program we run across the country and in our offices in the seven different Canadian provinces we operate in. And then we're going to talk about the uh, Work BC Assistive Technology Services Program, which is kind of my uh, baby as far as a, from a marketing standpoint that I promote throughout the province of BC. So it's a, a BC specific program. Uh, I'm going to put my email address in the chat as well. Should anybody have um, any questions that they don't want to share with the group, which we understand, um, it may be of a private nature and so forth. So. Uh, feel free to reach out to me via email and uh, be pleased to answer those questions and, and get in touch and just get you the information that you need. All right. So the first program we're going to talk about today is, is called the Distance Computer Comfort uh, Training Program. Uh, we've done literally everything, including selling buttons on the street almost, uh, to keep this program going. It's uh, 
It's um, one of our longest standing programs. And again, it addresses a real need in our country as it relates to digital literacy. Uh, there's a big fallacy in this in the world today that everybody knows how to use computers. And it's just not true uh, by a long shot. So we're gonna share with you why this is such a great program, or at least we think it is. So uh, it's not me, this is Gordon though. Uh, Gordon's a great guy, good fellow. And uh, again, not feeling well today. So I'm taking his spot and he's the distance training coordinator. Him and Katija work with uh, all the different participants and manage all the uh, volunteers that we have across the country, which uh, goes between, I think, 20 and 50 people on a, uh, any given uh, time, depending on how many participants we have in the program. So who is Neil Squire and what is the Neil Squire Society? Well, in uh, 1980, Neil, real guy, Neil Squire, was 21, going to the University of Victoria. He was on the basketball team. He was an honor student. And he had a terrible car accident which left him unable to speak or move his arms or legs after his car accident. Using some very groundbreaking technology at the time, Neil was able to use a breath, his breath to type Morse code. So they created a sip and puff device with a Morse code dot dash decoder at the other end of that. Uh, so when he did short sips or long sips or uh, short puffs or long puffs, the Morse code detector was able to determine that's an A or a B or a C, and you get what I'm saying. Uh, after Neil's passing in 1984, the Neil Squire Society was established in his name to help keep improving the lives of people with disabilities in Canada. Our work is focused on four distinct areas, research development and innovation, digital literacy, which is what this program is all about, uh, distance computer comfort, employment programs that we run across the country, and our superpower is assistive technology. Together, our work enables people with disabilities to achieve their goals, reach their full potential, and continue, continue living life to the fullest. And we all know employment is central to all our lives. And unfortunately, people with disabilities are affected in an adverse manner as it relates to employment. And uh, things like this digital literacy program can help improve on that. So what is the Distance Com Computer Comfort Program? Well, it's a computer training program. Provide an informal and non-threatening environment for learning basic computer skills. Um, the participant works one-on-one -on -one with a volunteer tutor um, and the same tutor throughout their 10 to 12 weeks of their uh, time in our program. The student, it's a student-centered learning. There's no fixed curriculum. We, we determine the curriculum after an intake with the client to have a better understanding of where their gaps are in the digital literacy situation. Maybe they have no information at all, so we're going to start at a very basic level, or maybe they already have some of those basic skills. They can get onto their computer. They can surf the, the internet a little bit, but after that, you know, file management or doing email or working with the Microsoft suite of products might be a real problem. Then we'll create a curriculum based on what their needs are. Um, and using technology, this learning can take place anywhere in Canada. So over the last decade or two, as the ability to uh, do online learning has increased with, you know, Skype and Blackboard, which is a cool technology, and now Zoom, uh, we can put the student and the, and the teacher in the same room very easily. Uh, and it doesn't matter where, what part of Canada that both are in, uh, we can facilitate that. And current students are from BC in the West all the way to Nova Scotia, out on the east coast of our great country. So it gives you a bit of a graphic representation. And the volunteer is much the same if you look at the two. And obviously, you know, several volunteer, one volunteer may work with several participants depending on their uh, time schedule. So how does it work? Well, participants with disabilities are paired with a volunteer tutor. Volunteers meet with the participants on a weekly basis at a prearranged, mutually, mutually convenient day and time. And pair, pairings normally last about 12 weeks, depending on the participant's disability and their ability to be online for uh, that period of time. And sessions will last up to two hours. Uh, they typically go anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours, again, depending on the participant's ability and disability and their uh, opportunity to stay online for that length of time. Uh, 
Topics covered are dependent on the participant's individual wish list. Again, this is there's no uh, predetermined uh, criteria. We will work with that individual to determine what they want to learn, and then the 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 tutor will determine a the best course of action to accomplish that. And additional support is available if needed to help answer questions and so on. <clears throat> so we want that volunteer tutor to be a a real uh, liaison and access to information for that. Uh, participant. So what's covered? Um, our tutors can provide basic one-on-one -on -one instruction on computer-related topics as far as computer basics like file management, uh, hardware and software, uh, you know, downloading the latest version of something, if you will, updating your files, uh, the different operating systems of Windows. Most of what we do now is Windows 10 and above. We do work in the Mac environment and the Chrome OS environment as well, and will help people again understand operating systems and how file management works in those different ecosystems. So what are the topics covered? Uh, well, MF, MS Office, so Word uh, for word processing, Excel for spreadsheet operation, and then presentations with the uh, Microsoft PowerPoint uh, suite of products. So topics covered, internet and social media. So we can really help somebody understand better how to use Facebook, um, Twitter, which are great ways for people to stay connected to their community. Um, obviously, email is a big part of, of, of that work. So showing them how to use a Gmail or a Yahoo account, uh, or if they use Outlook, to how to get the most out of that. Um, Facebook and Twitter, as mentioned, LinkedIn, uh, especially popular if they're trying to improve their employment situation. And then Instagram, which is a great way if they have a small business or something to uh, market those products and services. So a whole bunch of stuff can be covered there. Assistive technology training. So we specialize in assistive technology, um, as mentioned. So Dragon is a fantastic uh, dictation software product that was actually invented for a whole other uh, use. It was actually uh, for professors and students, they thought would be the brilliant idea back in the early 90s, but it turned out, or mid 90s, it turned out that this was a great piece of software for people that struggled to use their hands for input, uh, to use a mouse and or a keyboard. Uh, so Dragon is a dictation software that allows you to operate the entire ecosystem of the Windows environment using your voice. And if they have the ability, if the individual has an ability to use a mouse and a keyboard a little bit, that certainly helps because you can't use your, your voice all day. Um, but Dragon is a great software uh, that, that we recommend in many situations. And then JAWS is a screen reader. That's for people that are low vision or blind. And what JAWS does is it reads what the individual that is blind that cannot read, uh, it'll read what's on the screen to them, tell them what pictures they're seeing. If uh, that information has been put in the meta tags online. Uh, and that's, a, that's again, an, an excellent piece of software for somebody that doesn't have the ability to see what's on screen to interact with the, the digital world around them. Um, so phones. Tablets. Many people don't have computers. Uh, they use their phone as their computer. They use their tablet or a combination of them uh, as their computer. So we can uh, teach people on the Android uh, suite of products, tablets and phones, the iOS uh, in an iPhone or an iPad, uh, how to set up those devices. Um, and then a cell tablet, A2, AT tuition, so voiceover, Zoom, and navigation. So a whole bunch of different accessibility tools that are already built in to these products and we'll teach the individual how to get the most out of those as well. Um, the products coming out of the box today from Microsoft and, and Apple, uh, many of them have some fantastic accessibility uh, programs and, and products built right in. So who are our clients? Well, a wide range of physical disabilities, including spinal cord injuries. We work a lot with um, spinal cord uh, BC, SCI, BC, um, MS, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, uh, people with arthritis. So uh, many of our, uh, many people, maybe not quite yet retired, but maybe are, are affected by arthritis. Um, so there's lots of great tools that we can use there. And of course, people that have suffered a stroke, um, 
you know, may have lost use of a limb or, um, or both. And, and these variety of different software and hardware products can, can help get that person back uh, and engaged uh, as it relates to using computers and, and how that may affect their employment. And some clients have cognitive impairments or learning disabilities. We have a lot of um, history working with those folks as well in, in, again, creating a curriculum that will help them get, get to the stage that need, they need to, uh, to take advantage of some of the tools in the digital world. And age 16 and up, many of the participants will likely be in an older age demographic, um, but there is no upper age group. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll accept anybody from 16 to, you know, into their 70s and 80s should they want to be learning about computers. So for who, those who are interested, um, if you have a pen and piece of paper uh, or take a quick screenshot of this, or of course you can email me uh, and just say you want to get in touch with the folks at Distance Computer Comfort, or you can email Gordon directly and his email address is Gordon W, so G-O-R-D-O-N-W at Neil Squire, N-E-I-L Squire, S-Q-U-I-R-E dot C-A. Or again, I've put my email in the chat. You can reach out to me. Um, and then what we do is an intake takes place where we find out about the participant, uh, their disability, uh, and what their wish list of topics that they'd want to learn so that then we can pair them with the right uh, volunteer tutor. A computer setup takes place to ensure no viruses or malwares on the participant's computer. And a pairing session takes place where volunteer tutors and participants are matched, matched. And then the sessions begin and the learning starts. All right, uh, we can take any questions if there are any at all. Sasha. Hello. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to, I always just love to hear about um, the various opportunities that volunteers have to get involved um, with any organization's work. So I was wondering, um, yeah, it would be really cool to hear about um, if Neil Squire has um, any like upcoming volunteer involvement opportunities or what has um, if you guys have done anything in the past, yeah. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, great, great question, Sasha. And, and we do, there's two different programs. One is obviously this distance computer comfort training program where we're <clears throat> matching uh, participants with uh, volunteer tutors. And the same thing, you would reach out to Gordon for that, to sign up for that. There's obviously a little bit of <clears throat> paperwork that we have to put in place before somebody can uh, sign up to be a volunteer. And then uh, through our makersmakingchange.com program, which is really our research and development and innovation uh, side of things, we, we take in volunteers there. That has been a little impacted by the pandemic, but as we start to open up for business and start doing live events again, there'll be an opportunity there. And uh, Makers Making Change is really a, a community of makers and tinkerers that are trying to create... <clears throat> excuse me, kind of one-off solutions for people with disabilities, seniors uh, with barriers to their environment, and then uh, people that want to engage in gaming uh, with a disability or children with disabilities to interact with play toys. So for everybody in the audience today, I encourage you to go to makersmakingchange.com and see the stuff they're doing. There's some great stuff going on there. Uh, there are a bunch of online events that we have planned. And as I mentioned, we are slowly getting back to starting to consider planning some in-person and live events. Uh, you can find out all this information by signing up to our different newsletters, following us on Facebook or Twitter, where we're very active in social media and getting the information out about uh, all the different programs that we engage in. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nate. That's um, really great to, to have those, um, yeah, those, those kinds of, um, like the variety of programs and the overview for anyone that I feel like anyone that has any kind of niche interest in, in volunteering and contributing would be able to find something that yeah. suit them. Um, yeah. And definitely, um, definitely feel, feel you on the easing into in-person activities. I know we're, 
also starting to plan for for that starting the fall time. Yay. Yeah, fingers crossed all all right. going well, but it things are looking up for sure in terms we're of We're hopeful, right? Yeah, we're, we're hopeful. hopeful. Right. And that's all we can be. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Um, any questions at all in the chat come through on the first presentation that we can answer for the audience? I don't see any on the Zoom meeting unless there are any on the YouTube live stream. Okay. Um, Christina, did you happen to see if there are any questions coming through on the YouTube live stream? Okay, I looks like we're okay for that. All right. Um, perfect. But yeah, I'll I'll be sure to keep an eye out on the chat okay. in the meantime and let you know if any do come. Okay, through. perfect. All right. Okay, great. All right. So uh, our second presentation today is about the Work BC Assistive Technology Services Program. I will delve a little more into some of the different uh, programs that we operate uh, as this presentation goes through. Um, and, and make a couple comments that might have some value there too. <clears throat> this is a, a, a great slide to show uh, what Neil's setup looked, at, looked like after his accident and once we got the technology going. So again, I might you know, remind the audience this was 1980. So think about where technology was then compared to 2021. It was obviously drastically different. So this is Neil uh, around 1980, 1981. Um, he's now somewhat recovered from his accident, but he was left a, a tetraplegic, which means he was paralyzed from very high up in the neck down. Uh, obviously, he couldn't move his arms or legs, but he also couldn't breathe on his own and was losing his ability to speak. You can see the trach device in his throat. That, is, that hose goes to a pump on the floor that's actually, excuse me, operating Neil's lungs. Um, Neil sustained a C1 brainstem injury, which again, left him paralyzed from the neck down. Uh, Neil's family, along with some dedicated professionals, created a groundbreaking device, which enabled him to speak through the computer. So you can see the piece of paper hanging from that monitor. Uh, that's kind of the cheat sheet for the Morse code alphabet. And he would sip and puff the letters into words, into sentences. They could appear on that uh, monitor. You'd have literally played, you would have played Pong with back in the day, or he could get it to print out on that printer, which was a modified uh, teletype machine. I used to use one of those in the 80s when I lived in Grand Prairie and was sending orders back to Edmonton. Uh, and he would type at one end and it would magically type at the other. That's obviously been replaced by fax, which has been replaced by email, which is now being replaced by a variety of different technologies. So it took him a while to finally get all that going. Uh, what do you think the first thing Neil said was? Hey, mom, long time, no talk. You know what he said right after that? hey, nurse, can you turn the darn heat down in this place? And while I try and make a joke out of a serious situation, life, Neil's life was obviously changed very dramatically the day of the accident, but it was, it was changed quite dramatically here now as well with his ability to communicate with, uh, with loved ones, but communicate with caregivers, the, the doctors and the nurses and the occupational therapists and all the different people that were working with, with Neil at the time. Now, things were going really good. They were making a lot of progress. Technology was, was moving along in a rapid fashion. And then all of a sudden, Neil got pneumonia and, and died very quickly, unfortunately. And um, so that group of people that was working with Neil created the Neil Squire Foundation. Uh, fast forward to today, we're the Neil Squire uh, Society. In fact, we're just Neil Squire. We're still a society. We're a nonprofit and a registered charity in the country, but uh, the marketing people have rebranded us, rebranded us to just Neil Squire. And again, wanted to mention the four main pillars of our organization. One is uh, research development and innovation. That's, you'll find all that information under our makersmakingchange.com website. I encourage you to go check that out. And if you're either a maker or tinker or a person with a disability that has a specific challenge you need help with, that organization uh, or that arm of org, our organization may be able to help. So makersmakingchange.com, go check that out. Um, number two is digital literacy. That was the uh, program we just talked about. And that's connecting uh, people with a disability that want to learn more about computers with volunteer tutors. Um, and we, we've been doing that for many, many years in Canada, more than a decade. Um, so you'll find that under neilsquire.ca under distance computer comfort, and you'll find all the details there. 
Um, number three is employment programs. We have an employment program called Working Together, uh, which we run in our offices across the country. This is one of our longest running programs with Neil Squire, spanning over two decades in a variety of different iterations. And really what that is, is we're connecting people that just happen to have a disability with quality employers across the country looking for talent. Uh, very often there's a wage subsidy available for those employers. Um, if the individual with a disability requires an assistive technology or an accommodation to help them in their work, that'll often, depending on the employer that they're paired with, come with them or will help that employer put that in place. Uh, and again, you'll find that under neilsquire.ca, working together is the top program under programs. Um, and then four and finally is assistive technology. That's the, the thing that kind of weaves through everything that we do at Neil Squire. It is our superpower. Uh, it's something that, that we do the best in Canada. And uh, it's something that, again, impacts each part of the, the programming that we have uh, with Neil Squire throughout the country. So 926,000 people in BC identify as having a disability. That's obviously a huge chunk of the employable population. Um, despite high rates of post-secondary education, the unemployment rate for people with disabilities is 50% higher than the non-disabled population. And that, uh, that's something we're all trying to change. We understand how central employment is to, to everybody's lives. And it's no different for those with, for those with a disability. And uh, we're, we're trying to change that. You know, lots of myths out there when it comes to accommodating people with a barrier. Uh, they certainly don't have to be expensive. On average, it's about $500 to accommodate somebody with a barrier. Um, over 80% of people with a disability in Canada use some sort of aid or assistive device. And we're going to share with you this government-funded program in place to help get the workplace accommodations people need uh, as it relates to overcoming or minimizing their disability and their barrier to employment. So the program is called WorkBC Assistive Technology Services. We love acronyms in the employment industry, if you're not aware. So I'll be calling it WorkBC ATS uh, moving forward. So WorkBC ATS provides assistive technology supports based on your needs to help you gain and sustain employment. So there's two streams of input really for this program. People that are not currently in the workforce that are uh, looking and trying to secure employment, they'll do that through the through a WorkBC center in the province. There's 102 WorkBC centers in British Columbia, and we work very closely with those uh, centers around the province when they refer a client to us, uh, whether their barrier impacts uh, the job they eventually get or job search or the training program that they might be put through at WorkBC. If they require an accommodation or an assistive technology to accomplish those steps before employment, uh, that's a point at which they'll be referred to us for an assessment and an, and an assistive technology recommendation. The other group is people that are already in the workforce. Uh, that might be you listening on the call today, it could be somebody in your household or somebody you know in the community, your sister, your, your, your brother, your cousin, your neighbor, that, that person you used to play softball with or whatever it is. Uh, people that are already in the workforce employed full or part-time or self-employed, but again, they have a barrier, they have a disability, they have a, a chronic pain situation or an old injury, and they require and assistive technology to maintain or support their employment situation. Uh, they can apply directly online, which we'll show you near the end of this presentation. And we can serve you anywhere in British Columbia in person or virtually. Um, you know, hey, no big news to anybody on the call here. Canada's a big place, right? So as, as technology is allowed, we've developed these different best practices and modalities that allows us to do distance assessments of our clients, allows us to provide a high level of training uh, using technology like Zoom, like Blackboard in the past, like Skype back in the day, uh, that allows us just to get those two parties online together and facilitate uh, those training situations. So from an eligibility standpoint, you may be eligible for WorkBC Assistive Technology Services if you have a work-related barrier due to a disability or functional limitation. Now read that as, <clears throat> excuse me, chronic pain or an old injury. Uh, number one disability in Canada is, is chronic pain, uh, very common, uh, probably because about 70% of us are tied to a, a desk sort of job and uh, sitting for long periods of times we know is not good for us. And it creates 
uh, many situations, whether it be bad neck, back, shoulders, arms, wrists, carpal tunnel syndrome, there's so many different challenges. Um, or an old injury. So somebody who would be great to apply to this program is somebody that maybe was in a car accident or had a work safe accident, but that was two, three or four years ago. And now they're done with the insurance process and they're just, so their case is closed, whether it's ICBC or work safe or what have you. And now they're just trying to, you know, live their life and get back to their employment situation. Um, but they have these lasting, you know, challenges from their from their workplace accident or car accident where you know they've lost an arm or the use of their arm or it's going to take years for them to recover properly and they require an assistive technology so as long as their icbc or worksafe case is closed uh, then they can apply to this program as well and this may include barriers related to traveling to and from work excuse me what we mean by that is not handy darts cabs or transit we're referring to modifying uh, somebody's vehicle so that they can use hand controls for foot for gas and brake because they don't have the use of their feet and legs. Uh, now they have to supply the vehicle. The program doesn't supply the vehicle and it has to be a vehicle that can be modified because not all can. Uh, so there's, there's a process to, to make this happen. Um, but if, if your challenge is getting to and from work, and as we know, uh, transit is not readily available or doesn't work for everybody in, in all parts of the uh, province, even in the lower mainland, you still may be far enough away that transit just isn't a, a viable solution. And then the other way that we can help with that is if you're in a, a manual wheelchair and it's a challenge to get to and from transit or to and from work, or maybe you work in a large warehouse environment where wheeling around the facility all day is is just not, you know, not feasible. Um, we can add power to that manual chair in a variety of ways to help you get to and from transit or uh, from home to work or what have you. Uh, or again, you know, in the day-to-day -day use of, uh, of what you do for work where you need that, that extra mobility. So uh, to and from work, again, is something that your employer doesn't have to look after. Uh, so this program may be able to help if, if that's your barrier to employment. You know, we've, we've done and operated dozens and dozens of different programs in BC and across the country. And we know that these programs need to be flexible in the way we provide the employment related disability supports tailored to the client's individual needs. What that really says is that these programs aren't cookie cutter. You know, the first thing that we do when somebody's approved into the program is a full assessment by one of our occupational therapists. So it's, it's very thorough and individualized for that person. Um, efficient and effective. We offer these services in a simple and straightforward manner. The application is written in plain English. It's not full of legal ease. Uh, it's not full of industry jargon. Um, it's about a 12 to 15 minute process from one end to the other to complete the application. Um, so that, you know, efficient and effective in the way of efficient and effective, if you apply to this program, this isn't one of these programs where if you apply in July, maybe somebody will get back to you in August or September or November or October. That's not how this works. Once somebody's approved into the program, we're reaching out in the first 48 to 72 hours to schedule that, that first assessment piece. So um, we're definitely efficient. Uh, accountable in the way we assess, develop, and implement, implement the AT solutions and services in an expert way. Well, the, the people doing the assessments are occupational therapists. We have, I believe, seven now in the program and five of which are masters of OT. So these are highly qualified individuals. Uh, the people that do the assistive technology recommendations are assistive technology specialists or professionals. So, you know, the entire team is uh, created to, to provide a situation where we can come up with the right answer for the individual and there's just nothing cookie cutter or, um, you know, simple about it. it it's, it's a great program. It's definitely results focused in the way that we support a truly inclusive British Columbia. We want everybody to have the opportunity for quality employment. It is accessible. We do provide uh, consistent service across the province, whether you're in the, in the north or the, the east of the province or here in the lower mainland. Uh, we'll provide you that same high level of service and it really is client centered. We ensure that you receive access to the services you need to obtain or maintain sustainable employment. And, and we take that pledge very seriously. So available supports. Well, there's so many things. If you're taking notes today, I encourage you to go to askjan.org 
askjan.org is a website in the States that'll give you an, a, an exhaustive list of the different assistive technologies out there. The list is long, let me tell you. Um, what do we do a lot of? Well, I mentioned chronic pain. So we do a lot of ergonomics. So ergonomic supportive chairs, you know, for that individual, sit to stand stations, keyboards, mice, software like Dragon Naturally Speaking, um, the vehicle mods to get people to and from work, huge. Uh, and then hearing aids. Hearing aids are a big part of this program. There's no coverage in BC through MSP for hearing aids. Uh, they're two to 5,000 an ear. That's a chunk of money for most British Columbians, obviously. Um, even with a good benefit package, you likely are only getting 250 to 500 an ear, which st still leaves a large uh, you know, delta as it relates to the costs on those. So uh, hearing aids are a big part of that program. And again, your employer does not have a duty to accommodate your hearing loss as it relates to hearing, hearing aids. They might have to do other things at work, but if the real problem is your, is your hearing, uh, that's something an employer isn't going to pay for. So that's been a real big part of this program. This is a picture of our lab in Burnaby. It's a state-of-the-art lab. The only one other one that we know of it in BC is at GF Strong Rehab Center. Uh, we can actually separate this lab into two different unique uh, areas with one of those uh, heavy-duty uh, accordion room dividers. Uh, 100 different devices and software available on site. Uh, WorkBC Assistive Technology Services hosts one of the most extensive in-house assistive tech labs in Canada. Uh, it allows us to do trialing of different solutions for people when possible and really get the participant involved in, in helping them select when there, when there is an option, uh, which, which tool would be the best for them to help, help them get the most of their work situation. So from an accessibility standpoint, all our facilities are fully accessible. Uh, with the Rick Hansen Foundation Accessibility Certification. And we make the following considerations in order to create an accessible service for everyone. They know that it's private, safe, and comfortable. Uh, reduce wait times, as mentioned. Identify and accommodate the client's needs. That's paramount. And while the program is delivered in English, we do offer our services in 20 different languages. If, if, if uh, English is a barrier to the client, um, you know, we never we never want the application process to be the first barrier the client sees. So we'll do whatever we can to help somebody uh, navigate through the program. We have people from four different continents that work in our in Burnaby office. So we're super diverse and inclusive. So here's some success stories. This is Tony, works for uh, Starline Windows. You can see the sign up there. Starline Windows is a huge employer in BC. And uh, if Tony had a bad back, this program wouldn't be able to help him with an ergonomic chair because Starline Windows is a huge company and they have a duty to accommodate the needs of their staff, but they don't have the needs to accommodate uh, Tony's hearing loss. Uh, Tony says here, since being a participate, participant in the assistive technology services program, my life has improved for the better. Not only do I hear my colleagues better, it allows me to hear my sons and wife a lot better at home too. The focus is always uh, overcoming an employer-related barrier, but we know with something like hearing aids, that affects the whole person uh, in their personal and business life. So that's just a great win for Tony. This is Karen. Uh, Karen says, my customized chair has made so much difference in my life. Without the proper, proper supports on the sides, I was so tired at the end of my day and her back really suffered. Now I'm able to sit up straighter and feel so much more supported. Uh, Karen has cerebral palsy and scoliosis of the back. So uh, without that chair, Karen tends to lean over all day because that's the shape, that's the position her body puts her in, which again, creates a great deal of fatigue with this special chair with the modified uh, support arm there that allows her to sit up straight. And it's made a really big difference uh, for Karen. And then this is Gail. Uh, Gail had a real chronic pain situation. And she says she's now less fatigued and less stressed out at the end of her day. And she had no idea how much easier my job could be thanks to the accommodations provided through the assistive tech services program. So that's a sit to stand workstation that can go up and down. It's motorized. And then she got a supportive ergonomic chair as well and different keyboard and mice. And it's made a huge difference in Gail's life. So if we have offices throughout the province, 
Uh, today, I'm talking to you from the Burnaby condo office. So I'm working from home today. After this presentation, I'll be in the couch office. And because it's so nice out, I'll finish my day on the patio office. And you all know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, to apply, um, that's a bit of a long URL for anybody to jot down. So I'll try and go slow on this slide so you can jot that down. Or you can go to workbc.ca, um, which is the main website. And one of the main tabs is employment services. Click on that. And then the third one down is the WorkBC, excuse me, the WorkBC Assistive Technology Services Program. The first step for anybody in applying is their BC EID. So that's the electronic version of what we all used to kind of carry in our wallet. And then from there, it's a standard application of who are you? Where do you live? What do you do for work? What is your disability or barrier? How does it impact your work-related activities? Um, and then that comes to us. There might be some back and forth as far as questions and qualifications and paperwork. Uh, but as mentioned earlier, once we get through that stage and if the individual is approved, the first step is, uh, is us reaching out for an assessment. And we are starting to do some of those or more of those in person as the pandemic kind of winds down here, at least in BC. Uh, and, and hopefully by, well, at worst case, first quarter of next year, uh, this is well behind us. And then we'll, we'll go back to doing way more of that stuff in person. Now, people that are not in the workforce, so people that are employed full or part-time or self-employed can apply directly to us. People that are not in the workforce must be case managed by WorkBC. So the WorkBC Center will either A, help them uh, with this paperwork or B, direct them where to go to fill out the application online. And then they'll refer that individual to us uh, to work on an assessment and uh, provide the accommodations that they need to either a complete job search, the training that they're going to be put through to uh, achieve quality employment opportunities, or obviously the eventual job uh, that they're given through WorkBC. So the two streams are people that are in the workforce, employed full or part-time or self-employed, mostly small business. That's our focus in this program. They can go and apply directly online at workbc.ca. Again, employment services is the main tab. Click on that. And the third one down is our program. Or people that are not in the workforce, they must be case managed uh, by WorkBC. Again, there's 102 WorkBC centers in the province. And there's no matter where you live, there's, there's one probably very close to you or your community. Okay. All right. There's my mug. Um, there's some generic uh, access into the uh, office. If you have questions, I'll again put my email address in the chat for anybody that arrived a little late today. Uh, and if you have some questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to me. Happy to field those. And uh, Sasha. Hello. Thank you so much, Nate. Um, so, so cool to hear. Um, I always love hearing the testimonials of um, participants. And as well, it was really interesting to hear about um, the, sorry, there's a a lot of traffic on my street today. I don't know if you guys can hear that background noise, okay. <laughs> um, but it's really, really cool to hear speaking about traffic, about the transportation modifications that um, you provide through the WorkBC Assistive Technology Services. Um, I hadn't known about that program before, so oh, cool. I found it really interesting to yeah hear all about how there there are a lot of um, different different solutions to any transportation accessibility needs. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and getting to and from work, you know, it, that, that can be a huge barrier for somebody, right? So totally, right? especially totally. in the lower mainland or anywhere, but especially here. <laughs> yeah. And as we kind of ease back into um, more like part-time in-person work, or even for some people, full-time in-person work, um, I think that that'll be very pertinent <sighs> with um yeah moving from fully remote work into um whatever yeah whatever arrangements arise out of um the new normal of the pandemic i guess right. <laughs> yes. Yes. don't we love hate that phrase the new normal the new normal <laughs> Oh, goodness. But yes, that's, that's awesome. And I think as long as 
there aren't any questions from the YouTube stream, I think we're all good to go from, from the Zoom side of things. Um, and this no video questions. will... Yeah. Oh, sorry, Christina. Say that again. Yeah, sorry. Oh, there were, I was just confirming it. There were no questions from the YouTube side. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. And the, um, the stream will be uploaded mm -hmm. um, onto the Disability Foundation YouTube channel as well. Okay. Awesome. You can find that there. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so well, much. Well, thanks very much for the opportunity today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining us today, Nate. We really appreciate you coming and presenting to us and our members. Yeah, absolutely. And keep up the good work. You're you're changing the lives of people every day, and uh, I absolutely applaud the work that, that you folks do, and, and thanks for letting me be a part of your roadshow today. Oh, that's so nice to hear, and same exact to you, and 